The first chemoreceptor sense was our sense of taste. Now we're going to talk about our sense of smell. The sense of smell is also known as our sense of olfaction, or it is called our olfactory sense. Um, so both of these are chemoreceptor senses. Before I move on to olfaction though, remember that there are chemoreceptors inside of your body as well that are busy tasting your blood and what they are doing, you're not consciously aware of, but they are sensing the amount of CO2 and the pH in your blood and reporting it to your brainstem. And then your brainstem will respond by making you breathe faster or making your heart beat faster or slower, depending on what they sense. So the sense of smell, our olfactory sense. And I got a picture of a dog here because dogs might be the kings of the chemoreceptor sense of smell. Uh, don't feel bad though. It could be that humans are the kings of the photoreceptor sense, our sense of vision. But dogs are really, really good at smelling. And the way that dogs can smell things better um, says very much about the way that sensation is processed by mammal brains. First of all, let's talk about how smell is a chemical sense. It is a chemical sense. And so here are the different chemoreceptor cells that are up here in your nose. Where are they? Oh, I think you need to know this for the exam. They are immediately adjacent to the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. Remember the cribriform plate, it had all the little holes in it? Um, the ethmoid bone had the cribriform plate that you could see from the inside. And sitting on those little holes on the inside are the olfactory bulbs of the brain. So a few things that are interesting. One thing is there is the thinnest possible barrier between the world outside and your brain right here at the cribriform plate. And it's really remarkable that we don't end up with brain infections more often because of how, how close to the brain the epithelium here of the mucosa of the nose is. Yeah, I gotta look into that more. It is really surprising. Anyway, that's one thing. Another thing is, and you should write this down, I think it's on the exam, that all of these senses that we are learning about, uh, touch, taste, mm, hearing, balance, vision, all of them except the sense of smell, all of them except the sense of smell, spend time here in the thalamus. The thalamus is kind of a switchboard. And all of our other senses, before we perceive what it, it is that we are detecting with our receptor cells, it goes through the thalamus. That is not true for your sense of smell. Your sense of smell is the first sense that gets turned on when you're still inside of your mom. When you're inside of your mom, you will start to smell things long before you see or hear or taste things. And even before you can experience a sense of touch, you will smell things, okay? So let's see. So a few things that are really unusual. We think that the reason that your sense of smell has such a persistent memory is because it does not go through the thalamus on its way to being perceived. Um, now, hu humans have about 5 million of these little cells. You can only smell as many things as you've got receptor cells for it because each receptor cell is kind of dedicated. And you also need to have a surface receptor protein that allows you to experience a specific chemical. Now, our sense of taste, we really only have five different kinds of proteins on the receptor cells in our tongue. So we can really only taste five different tastes. However, our sense of smell is much, much more intricate. And so I told you earlier, and I'm telling you again, 
most of your experience of your food is your sense of smell. Without a sense of smell, uh, vanilla ice cream tastes basically like caramel ice cream or um, some kind of nut ice cream, right? Um, without a sense of smell, strawberry tastes like cherry, tastes like watermelon. Most of the experience of those kind of intricacies is your sense of smell. There are people who are born without the ability to smell things. And people without the ability to smell things usually do not know that they can't smell things until they're well into their teens or early 20s. However, people who cannot smell things, they usually will have a very unusual relationship with food because in the absence of a sense of smell, foods are all kind of alike. And so people without a sense of smell have much more of a priority on uh, texture yeah, texture and fat content of their food. So smell. Now, people have about 5 million of these cells. Don't memorize the numbers, not gonna ask you. Dogs have about 40 times as many cells. And that's true even for a small dog. So here you are, you're a big 135 pound person. Don't tell anyone I told you, um, but uh, a 20 pound dog has got 40 times as many of these cells as I do. So you would imagine that dogs can smell about 40 times as well as I can. Not true. There are all kinds of different numbers out there. So please don't memorize this, but dogs can smell at least a million times as good as we can. Don't feel bad. You probably can see, I don't know if anyone's quantified how well we can see, but several hundred thousand times as well as they can. Now, why is it that they only have 40 times as many cells, but they've got like a million or 10 million times the ability to smell? Two different things, okay? Not just simple. So yes, more cells, but more cells that did a little bit. They have more proteins more different types of proteins to receive the smell. So remember on the last video, I told you that there are some things I simply can't taste. I mean, you might be able to taste them. I can't taste them. I don't have a protein for it. Well, dogs are like that. Dogs are like, you can't smell that? It's like, it's really strong. And you're like, nope, can't smell it. If you don't have a protein that can receive it, you can't smell it, okay? So dogs have more cells, dogs have more proteins, but here's, Here's the really big thing. Dogs dedicate more of their brain to the perception of smell, the perception of smell. Dogs, they dedicate about two thirds of their brain processing ability to smell. Humans, we dedicate about 10%, which is, okay. Dogs, they did it 10%. Okay, that is like six ninths of their brain, and we dedicate less than one ninth of our brain. Okay, so they dedicate a huge chunk of their brain to creating meaning from the sensation that they're receiving. Remember, perception, that's what the brain does. And a dog's ability to smell things incredibly well is more a matter of perception and the fact that they have additional proteins than it is that they have got more cells. How good are they at it? Dogs can actually detect cancer. Yes, it's true. Dogs can smell when something is cancer. You know, it used to be just something that dermatologists would tell each other. They would say, oh, a patient came in and said that her dog kept sniffing at a mole. And I was like, I took that sucker out right away. Why? Because dermatologists know that when a dog starts sniffing at a mole on a person, it's very likely because it's cancerous. Now, it used to be something just dermatologists said to each other, but then someone started testing it. And once we started testing it, we found out that they could de detect malignant melanoma, skin cancer, as well as a human scientist with a microscope as well. 
probably not as well as DNA testing, but as well as a scientist in a pathology lab and can also diagnose humans that have got breast cancer or lung cancer from a breath sample. So they had, a dot, they had people, either that were healthy or not healthy, um, exhale into like a little cloth thing, you know, like a little gauze thing in a little tube. And then they kept the little cloth things and let the dogs smell the cloth things. And they found that dogs could diagnose cancer. Right now, there are like three or four different countries that are employing dogs to smell for COVID infection at airports. Yeah, uh, Finland had a really big study. I think France is doing it and the United States is going to start it. Dogs smelling for COVID-19. Now, a couple of things about that. First of all, I'm a veterinarian. I think we ought to just train a whole bunch of dogs because that'd be fun. But the truth is that dogs are smelling either a specific chemical or a specific pattern of chemicals. So there are scientists that are trying to develop machines that would allow us to do the same thing. Imagine if we just had a really smart dog who would write us down the recipe. Okay, cancer smells like two thirds of this chemical, got it, one third this chemical, got it, and a little pinch of this chemical in that ratio, and healthy people have got this, okay? So then we could build a machine so you could walk into your doctor's office and just exhale into the machine once a year, and then they could diagnose, ooh, it seems like they might have breast cancer, and they would send you off for additional testing. Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. But we're not doing that. So nerves from the olfactory receptors travel through what parts of the skull to enter the brain? Look at your nose, because I just told you they go through the cribriform plate, so that's true. And the cribriform plate is part of the ethmoid bone. Is it part of the nasal bone? No. Is it part of the frontal bone? No. So one and two are correct, or this could be a check all that apply. Okay. Good. So smell is the only one of our senses that does not go through the thalamus before it reaches the cerebral cortex we process it directly. And that's why, like even someone my advanced years, I haven't smelled, I haven't smelled Play-Doh for, I don't know, 40 years, 50 years. I would still recognize the smell of Play-Doh. You have really, really persistent smell memories. And we think it might be because it does not go through the thalamus. Yeah, I'm getting far into the weeds here, but we want to know what can a dog smell? That's what we want to know. So as a protein biochemist, one of the ways we approach that is we find how many G protein coupled receptor genes can we find in the DNA of dogs? And many of the, DNA, of the G protein coupled receptor proteins, many of them do allow for a sense of smell, not all of them. Some of them are important to your nervous system, but many of them allow you to have a sense of smell. And if we could just reverse engineer it, we may be able to discover what smells a dog can smell that we can't smell. Alrighty, we're going to do the visual sense in the next video.